What's up, fellas? Now, you know me, I, I typically don't do build videos. This channel focuses on what are we going to do with the thing we built. But I'm going to be burying some interesting things. And I just wanted to show that this thing does have some underlying structural reinforcement. I just got this thing tacked up. This is the lid to uh, one of the most amazing burners I've ever built. That's the gist of it anyway. Just had to show you guys this because when it's all said and done, you'll want to know how I did it. <laughs> I'm borrowing my air compressor as a mold. I chopped the bottom off of it. I may or may not put those items back on. We may just have to make something cool out of this air compressor now. I'm hoping I can pull it out of there. That's my main worry right now. If I gotta chop it out of there with a plasma torch, I will. But this is the top section of a tri-burner foundry. It's gonna look something like that when it's done. That's the basic idea anyway. Okay, fellas, so here's the situation. This is a little bit more excitement than I'm used to this time of night, but these days anyway. All right, under no circumstances should you ever do this, obviously. Here's my theory. Now, this thing's gonna pressure up and wanna explode out of that concrete, but the thing is, as soon as the seal is breached, the volumetric airflow needed to really launch this baby through the ceiling just isn't going to be there. It's just going to sputter out. So, not quite like a car tire. I'm just going to give it a little lick of power. The bottom drain port on this thing's been chopped off flush with duct tape put over it. So, let's see what happens. It might not even be turned on. No. This is really dangerous. How much pressure does one give it before you get scared and call it quits? All right, it's getting pretty damn terrifying at this point. I should do this outside. <laughs> you bastard, crack loose. I'm afraid to even check the pressure. I need to put a remote gauge on it. Whoa, what was that? Heard a pop. All right, I got a remote gauge. Showing no pressure. See what happens here. All right, guys, I'm doing this because I'm lazy. Not getting any pressure here. The regulator might be out all the way. Yeah, there's some pressure in there. My gauge is finally working. We're at about 40 psi is it's holding.
man, that is just too damn scary. I'm at 45 PSI at holding. Then again, I just thought of something. If the pressure is sealed right at the hole, there's not really any pressure getting under the compressor itself. So maybe this whole thing's kind of flawed a little bit. I give up, man, I'm too young to die. And I'm too broke to put a new roof on this thing. Give me a damn hammer. Good thing I don't care about this compressor anymore. You see why it won't even turn on when you plug it in. On that good old China freight. Hey, they ought to rename that place Corona Freight. <laughs> you think they'll still have a Corona Freight after this? Okay, we're loose here. I wonder if I could quit being a pussy and pressure it up again. Give me that damn cord. All right. I hear his. So, when the rest of the concrete gets here, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish this thing up. And just kinda form this up with some plexiglass to finish it off. Man, this thing turned out heavy. I mean, I knew it was gonna be heavy, but geez. How am I gonna get this in a truck? I'm gonna have to call Shane. I don't wanna get too fancy. This thing's turning into a money pit. I'm worried about how hard it's gonna to be to pour this thing and maybe a two-man job. I haven't been on the test yet. It's gonna be a beast, I think. I certainly don't wanna be standing here for it. It's actually not that bad. got quite a bit of control of this guys and this is every bit of 450 pounds right now I had seven bags invested in this but I lost a little bit I've got an eighth bag on the way and the bags are 55 pounds oh this is nice I've got pretty good control you can also find the back to stay in a safe area that is not very controllable I can't see what I'm doing at all I hate that. I imagine this thing's gonna be incredibly hot. That's not so bad. I'm almost thinking maybe you had a guy here and a guy there. I don't want it to be a two man show. You're definitely not in a safe spot standing right here. For any of you guys who've never seen metal poured before, it can get pretty exciting. If you're not wearing clothing made specifically for that, you can't stand right here. You'll light on fire. The only emergency stop I have is the bar itself. I'm hoping no one would tip it too far like this. It's still manageable. I can lift this okay without losing it. I 
tell you what, I think I am gonna run another bead to stiffen that up. When this gets hot, it may get soft. And the last thing I want is for this to rip off of there or fall down one way or the other. So, yeah. Dude, I was a little hard on that. You don't want to jolt that lid like that. So there you have it, fellas. Uh, I hate doing videos that don't have the conclusion in the video. I feel like uh, I get ripped off when I encounter those myself. But there's a lot of effort going into this, guys, and the video is going to end up being an hour long. So I'm just going to share my struggle with you here. It's a shame I was that short, guys. Any of you guys with any experience in casting high aluminum refractory, the company I bought this from told me I'm okay. They said just make it rough and get it wet before I apply the second layer. Um, for any of you who have concern about air pockets, I am going to fill these holes up with water and try and give this a few good wraps with a hammer to agitate any air bubbles out of there. I'm a little worried about air bubbles in my keyways. They weren't that narrow. They, they shrank up on me. Those are meant to just eagle claw that secondary pour in place. I kind of like this high ridge right here we've got. So we're in good shape with this ridge like this. I may just spackle it in place and not even bother putting up any further form work. Forgot to show you guys this side of the unit. It's gonna have a gate slag door. I guess I should talk about what's going on right here. These three intake ports are where three of my preheat burners are gonna go. The hottest burners that I sell, those are the ones that melt cast iron in eight minutes. It's gonna have three of them. And they're gonna shoot down into this thing and we're gonna get a massive cyclone of death going on in here and i'm hoping that that will melt the metal without needing a crucible and this is the slag port there's going to be a gate door on here that slides back and forth i i still got to build the uh components to hold that i'm not sure how i'm going to do it yet i may go with a door that simply slides up and uh, a pin goes through to hold it in place or i don't know yet I'm on the fence what I want to do still. I'll cross that bridge when I get to it, but what, what we're going to be doing here is sticking a, a tool inside of here and scraping the, the dross out. And there's going to be a little ramp that comes down to come past the structure so you're not pouring slag all over. This is the discharge port, which is not finished. Um, I intend to put a, a discharge duct here about this big and possibly line it with some refractory and the reason for that is this area right here will glow at an incandescent heat and will burn your eyes and i don't want to do that plus it'll put off a lot of radiation as well the stainless steel will eventually burn out of here and leave the concrete skeleton but that's fine with us we don't mind that one bit i'd rather have it increasing the life of the machine as much as possible I've got another foundry here with kind of a similar scenario. It's a sacrificial form that lasts for years. Pretty good deal in my opinion. This part here, the pour snout, I'm going to go ahead and pour the whole thing I think. And um, I may wait for it to get kind of dry and then carve out the shape I want. Or I might just take a diamond blade to it because I haven't finished any of this yet either. So. I've heard that messing with this stuff while it's setting can be detrimental to its integrity. So I, I may just go the diamond blade route. Any of you guys who've ever done any of this stuff, please hook me up with some input in the comment section. 